Here are three things not to do when you make an offer on a house. Number one, don't randomly pick an offer price out of thin air. What you should do when figuring out to what, to, what to offer is you want to find your MAO. That's your maximum allowable offer. To find the MAO, you want to start with the ARV. That's after repair value. What is the house going to be worth when it's all done? Once you have the ARV, you want to deduct the amount it's going to take you to fix up the house. That's your rehab costs. You also want to deduct your holding costs, your closing costs, and of course, how much you want to make in profit at the end of the day. I also like to deduct a little more for a contingency. Once you know your MAO, again, that's the maximum you want to offer, figure out how much lower you want to go as a starting point for your negotiation. One tip I can't stress enough is to always build contingency into your number because something's going to go wrong, there's going to be some kind of surprise, and you're going to need a little extra money to cover it. Number two, don't let your fear paralyze you. You've run your numbers, you know what you want to offer, but you're scared of actually pulling the trigger. For me, making that first offer was a little scary. This is where everything goes from theoretical now to practical. You go from numbers in your head and a house in your head to a physical house on a physical street that you're actually going to try to purchase. You're dealing with real people and real dollars. This is a time that can get really overwhelming, but lean on your team, lean on your numbers, know what you need to do, and go ahead and make that offer. It can be scary, but really what's the worst that can happen? Someone's gonna say no to that low offer, and that's okay, that's the starting point for your negotiation. You can work up from there, hopefully staying at or below your target purchase price. And if someone says no, that's great because you've at least gone through the process, take it as a learning experience, and you'll be better prepared for the next time you make an offer. The third thing is don't get impatient. I know how it goes. You've gone through this entire process, you're looking for houses, you're getting your realtor, you're building your team, you're figuring out your costs, you decide finally to make an offer, and you're going, 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 and all of a sudden, that entire process stops. Now you're waiting to hear back. You really can't get impatient here. Your mind might start wondering, what if I offer too much? What if I offer too little? What if they don't accept my offer? What if they do accept my offer? What if you miss something in your estimate? What if the house is no good? What if there's other problems? There's a lot of uncertainty and now you have the time to think about it and it gets really stressful. My recommendation is take a breath. Your offer is submitted. Now's the time to relax. Take a minute, collect yourself, figure out what you're going to do next. Wait and hear back. Sometimes it could be a day. Sometimes it could be an hour. Sometimes it could be a few days. You don't really know, and it's going to be different with every project. But if you get impatient and mess up the process, all you're doing is hurting yourself. Stay calm, stay patient, wait for the counteroffer, or the acceptance, or the denial. But once you do get an acceptance, that's when the madness begins.